Test one, two, test one, two. Stop. I- Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. Nick Reynolds, Steve Harness, and Cousin Brewski. The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. It is The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. All the Brewski. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, an invitation to see us on our webpage. It's thevocalminority.net. All our socials are there. Who's on the show today? <laughs> Regular cast and crew, dude. What's up, Steve? <laughs> we are here. We are online. And yes, it would make us all feel very nice if you helped spread that good word around. Yeah, you know the show. It's a phenomenon, dude. It's a phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What up, Brewski? Yeah. Brewski's been doing his best out there promoting. Uh, check out our socials for for our advertisement in Times Square. We are still <laughs> But we yeah. have an advertisement in Times Square right now. To this day, it's the most expensive piece of advertising <laughs> we've uh, taken out on the program. That's probably fair. And also, let's not forget that we uh, are representing in front of the Fox News headquarters there in New York City as well. Yes. Yeah. Brisky, yeah, Brisky, uh, uh, kind of ran around New York City to various hot spots from Times Square to some of the subway stops. You hit up NBC and Fox News. Yeah. And what is uh, what's he putting up? stickers damn it that say our name and uh give a little information so we appreciate it brewski job well done oh now you are a champion let's talk about sex let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be let's Let's talk talk about about sex sex. wasn't trying to bring that out but there you go it's an intro there it is (laughs) all right apparently i talk about porn a lot and as i listen back over the show uh it does come up occasionally I've tried to sing the virtues of porn before. That's like a game film. You got to know what your sport is and you got to look at the people that do it better than you, perhaps. See what yeah. techniques you can learn. And let's not sell yourself as a Neanderthal, dude. You're also a fan of the arts. I mean, you're a sophisticated human. Oh, I, 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 I expose myself to a lot of things. And I'm not talking about school children, I'm talking about uh, the arts and society. Yes. And here's a question, actually, I've been pondering of late because, yes, I was accused of talking about uh, porn a lot and now it's it's in my brain and uh yeah Dottie asked me recently like how much porn do you watch and i think that's a nuanced question when you guys watch porn quote unquote how much time are you putting in i think there's an implication that if i'm watching porn that it's like i'm putting on gone with the wind and i'm spending three hours you know staring at porn uh, yeah i mean if i'm watching porn i'm obviously jerking my jerkin you know um, right so how much prep time and then how much time do you need like how much time are you watching porn i'll give you max 20 minutes wow that's okay. for you know prep and you know scrolling and enjoying uh but then you know there's times that it's you know four three four minutes yeah exactly you know. uh, what was your wow, Bruce? You just 20 minutes sound like a long time or not long? Yeah, time? exactly. I usually know exactly what I'm going for. Like, I've got go-to things that, that I just immediately know. If I go to that, it's going to do it for me. Right. And, and then I can get it all done inside of four minutes. Right. I was yeah. going to say, I think my average time is five minutes. I mean, yeah. And if uh, I told you I'm a big Seinfeld fan, I watch five minutes an episode and then I'm done, you would say, you're not a Seinfeld fan. <laughs> you don't yeah. like Seinfeld. You're a poser, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to porn, I think some women think that when guys say, yeah, I was watching porn, they think it's uh, some movie marathon where we've carved yeah. out the whole afternoon. <laughs> and like you're watching Titanic or something. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> And in the old days, before we started watching it on our phones or our computers, you would sit there with the remote, and as soon as there wasn't any sort of sex going on, you'd be like, what is up with all this talking? And you'd hit in the fast-forward button until it got to the good part. I think I might often spend more time looking for something to watch than I spend watching it. You know what See, I mean? Like you're scrolling through, like, no, I not that one, not that one. I need, uh, let me go to the yes. next page. Like, oh, I got to need to find something. I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. This yeah. is what I like about the page I promoted before, the XNXX. Like they have a daily posting of like, here's what we think you might like today. And I always think it's worth scrolling through because it's stuff that would take me an hour to go find amongst the website. But I scroll through the daily, you know, when I go there. Uh, and when you scroll through that daily, I would estimate that there's... 30 videos on there for the daily list. Uh, maybe one or two of them 
piqued my interest. It's uh, not the greatest list I've ever seen. Pornhub does a great list, but I can't go to Pornhub anymore. Why is that? Because of the virus threats or what? Yeah. Steve's an expert. Listen, if I'm going to go talk to somebody about uh, racing cars, I'm going to go talk to Dale Earnhardt or whoever, right? Wow, like, yeah. uh, So Steve is my oh. Dale Earnhardt of porn, oh. and uh, he told me, XNXX, that's the safest place for you. I do stand by that, but I appreciate you putting me up on that level. That sure. I'm Dale Earnhardt of porn yeah. advice. So, <laughs> there you go. So uh, we watch, uh, as a society, a lot of porn, and I do think that there are some good things that can be learned from porn. There's also a ton of bad things that men can be picking up from porn. This whole spitting in women's mouths, this whole oh, yeah. disrespect thing that has come up in porn. Uh, I think there's a lot of dangerous stuff. And as yes. I said before, like that's the only chat I'm gonna have with my son is like porn's fine, but just all the disrespect and violence, like none of that is okay. None of that's real life. None of that's gonna score you points on your, you know, love life out there. So Right. But I came across an article the other day from uh the Huffington Post and uh, the headline is, women are sharing the sex moves they wish men did not copy from porn. Ah, listen up, boys. Now, this is written by a woman, and I will tell you, skimming through the article, there's things I agree with and things I don't. And I think it's a commentary on the fact that some women think they know what all women want, but well, you don't. No, yeah, no. I've had enough of a sampling in life now to know that... There's a little something out there for everyone. There are some sex acts that some women love and others would never touch with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> right. Nine-inch pole in my case. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so let's run through this list. I'm curious to see uh, what our thoughts are on it and uh, whether, whether or not we think these are you know valid notes to be taking. Please, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you truthfully what the deal is. Please do. And this woman points out that she did take some of these uh, answers from uh, Reddit users that she was surveying. So it's not entirely her opinion, but okay. it's obviously put through her perspective since she wrote the article. Okay. So these are uh, things that women wish men did not copy from porn. Number one, and these are in no particular order, but uh, number one on the list is thinking that women can orgasm from two minutes of penetration alone. <laughs> does anyone think that? I've never thought that. Nor does porn. Nah. That's the one thing about porn I think that is good to take from, is you don't do the two pump chump thing. You don't just do one position. Like, porn goes on and on and on, probably more than most people's real-life sex lives. But Yes. Yeah. No, I've never seen a porn that's a two-minute pump and dump. I, I've never seen that. Those dudes actually put in work, you yeah. know? Uh, I mean, they got to do a whole hour, you know, and how many people are they going to contract for the actual scenes, you know? You got to put in some work, dude. And these men are, uh, in, uh, you know, taking syringes and injecting chemicals into their penis. They're going to well, go for a while, dude. I would argue the porn teaches the opposite lesson, that it's not just two minutes. You got to put in 30 minutes worth of effort <laughs> and do a dozen different positions and everything else. Listen, women, I know you've been with a lot of guys that can't go for more than two minutes, but they didn't learn that from porn. Just... So we're all on the same page here. And I've been with some women in the past where the minute you're in, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to lose this already. It's not like that with every woman, though. Some women, it's just that good. Well, I, I've noticed anecdotally in my life that if you do the correct amount of foreplay and getting them wound up and all that, that sometimes two minutes of penetration can get the job done. <laughs> you got to heat up that oven before you try to get cooking. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to have to say, I don't know where they got this from, that men think uh, two minutes of penetration alone can do it. So Most guys know that. They just don't care. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> So, all right, so next thing on the list, uh, things women think men have learned from porn they want us to knock off. Uh, if there's anything we should agree on, it's the lack of moaning. I really don't get how men can be so silent, but when they aren't, it's the biggest turn on. Or, or when men moan, it's the biggest turn on? Is that what she's saying? Yes. She's saying that, uh, that apparently men don't think we need to moan, but the porn has taught us that we do. Uh, outside of talking, do you make noise when you are enjoying sex at all? With the, whether it's moans or chirps or whistles, <laughs> this is a whole another thing that I've realized. Every woman is different. There are some women that like dirty talk. There are yeah. some women that like really dirty talk. There's some women I've been with that want condescending, like you're a dirty oh, yeah. whore. Like, I mean. Those are things I've learned from porn that I thought you should never do, like you dirty little bitch. Like, but I've been with women that want that. And you kind get of requests. Yeah. Yes. 
Do you and, moan? Uh, and the moaning. Like, I feel that that should be organic. Like, if you're yes. feeling it, then sure. Like, don't just do it to do it. Sure. Like, probably a lot of porn stars are, I'm sure. Well, but, um, yeah, I, I, I say go with the flow. If you're feeling it, sure. Do, do you yeah. guys know who Maria Sharapova is? Sure. Uh, the tennis player? Right? Tennis star. Yeah, tennis star. Oh, tennis star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Adam Levine, the guy from um, Maroon 5. Uh, Maroon 5. <laughs> he actually dated her for a while, and he said, and this was such a bummer, it really was, that when he was with Maria Sharapova, she could only be on her back, and that he had to remain absolutely silent because she needed to focus on her orgasm. Wow. Yeah. Like she wanted, she wanted to hear nothing from him whatsoever, do exactly what she needed to get done. And then at that point, even if you weren't finished, she was done. Wow. Yeah, I don't think those uh, restraints are uh, for a healthy sex life. You know what I mean? Of like, don't make any noise. Don't do that. I got to concentrate. If you have to work on concentration the whole time, like something's not happening correctly. No, yeah. there's something mentally going on with her. Either she thinks she's too good for everyone else, which, you know, she's been taught that by society. Uh, or, yeah, she's got some abuse or something in her background where she's got to go to a happy place in order to be able to orgasm. Like, that's not good. Yeah. No. And, yeah, yeah. commentary why you got to find someone who's sexually compatible with you. And looks is not necessarily a good indication. you got to know how they are when the lights go down. Yeah, for sure. Because you would think of Maria Sharapova would be a sex goddess, but yeah, that's sounds yeah. obnoxious. Right. Yeah. I had a woman once that would refuse to do doggy style. She felt it was condescending and belittling. What? She just refused? Yes. Flipped yeah. her over once and started. She was like, no, no, no. And then, you know, like, oh, okay. And then we talked about it afterwards. She was like, I think that's just berating and condescending. I'm supposed to turn around and bend over for you. Yeah. You but know. to be fair, you were also asking her to bark like a dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> I put the dog collar on her. I didn't yeah, think that I mean, was too much, Let's get but. the whole story. Maybe she had a partner in the past who really kind of ruined that for her. Right. You, you know, all it takes is being with somebody that, that really gives you a bad experience, which just yeah. completely ruins it for you. You're like, yeah. I can't do it. Uh, and it could also be, Stephen, that you're just uh, so beautiful <laughs> that she wants to see your face, dude. That's, you know. <laughs> that wasn't it. And uh, yeah, wants- you're right, Bruski. It was a past bad experience with uh, <clears throat> with her father. So that- <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh. That's Not funny. joking. <laughs> oh, oh wow. wow. You know who I'm talking about. So, yeah. This was a woman who I was with, and then she had all these repressed memories from her childhood of her father molesting her. And it, no. I mean, wow. it wrecked everything, and apparently that was one of the things that he did. So. Ooh, yikes. Right. Wow. So these, are, these are how you learn some of these things. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. Uh, next one on the list. Um, Please. Uh, again, these are things that women feel men have learned from porn and they want us to stop doing. This woman says, I don't understand the appeal of penis slapping. Why do men want a penis slap? Oh, I think that's for the guy. That's not necessarily for you, right? Mm, I, I will say this. Sometimes there are some women I've been with who actually like it when you use your penis to slap on their clitoris dude thank you that's what we're talking about here but i'm not talking about slapping you across the face with my, my penis or anything like that <laughs> yeah which I, that would be completely different well but that is want, a move out there but, but, if, but if you want that I'll, I'll help out that's no problem that is but, hilarious the reason i applaud you is because throughout my entire life i've always thought this whole penis slapping thing like who, what woman wants that and at some point in my recent history here I had a woman say, I want you to slap my clitoris with yours. Like, yes. that turns her on. Yeah. And I always thought penis slapping was just some weird thing made up in porn that no woman would possibly ever have a practical use for. But it's been requested. But think about this. You, when you're ringing the doorbell, right? Ding yeah. dong, ding dong, ding dong, right? <laughs> okay, you're not just like touching it with your thumb or something like that. At this point here, you now have your penis, which for all intents and purposes, is filled with blood. Instead of just touching it with a finger, now you've got this fleshy thing just like slapping it hard. That's even better okay, than ringing dude. the doorbell. We get it, dude. All I right. thought that was uh, something no one was into, but Bruce, I'm glad to hear you say that. Oh, yeah. Uh, how about this? Porn moves. 
that uh, women say guys should stop. Uh, I once had a guy use his tongue to rapidly flick my nipple like a deranged lizard on steroids. Uh. Mm, I think you can do great things with your tongue, but most of them I don't think are, are, are violent and rapid like that on nippies. Come on, let's love a little bit here. I'm going to have to dissent on this one. I'm going to have to disagree. Oh, um, really? Yeah, because, again, it comes down to every woman being different. Uh, sure. I was, uh, you know, in, in my marriage, um, my my ex-wife wanted nothing. Don't touch my boobs in any way, shape, or form. Like, really? Nothing for her. There was no nothing. So I went years and years and years without playing with boobs at all because it, she was like, does nothing for me. That is uh. the saddest thing I've ever heard. Thank in you. my life. Well, yeah. well, okay. Part of why I'm an ass man, because I spent so many years where someone was like, just ignore those. They don't do anything for me. Oh. Have you ever had women try to touch your nipples, like squeeze your nipples or anything like that? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah so well, I swat uh, them away like flies. Like, get, get, stop, get up. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> don't touch my nipples. I don't you guys mean- are very complimentary thanking each other today, dude. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you're you on guys, out today. Steve, Steve, Steve and I are a lot more alike than we think. Let me Here. make a quick side note before I tell you why I dissent with that. Uh, what about uh, the, 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 the little guys or balls? Oh, uh, porn has taught women that men love having their balls played with. I don't leave them alone. Thank yeah. you, Steve. I hate. I'm glad you said that. Thank you. <laughs> now I, we're on the same page. Yeah, I hate having my balls played with. The only person touching those really should be me. I'm the only one I trust. Exactly. They are sensitive, and there's no arousal. Even if you do it right, quote unquote, there's no. Uh. no. It makes me tense up and lock up. And I've had to tell women before, like, I appreciate the effort, but leave those alone. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's counterproductive. It's not a good thing. But I'll also say that uh, in BJ time, I don't, I don't want you to put any uh, time down on my balls. I yeah. don't. Sucking right. them, whatever. No. I don't the, want the, it. The twins need to be left alone for any of that stuff. But there. Thank it's, you, Brewski. Yeah, it's just, it's just going to stop making you get cramped in your stomach. Let them send it out. Yes. So okay. So for women watching this and listening, like yeah, we're giving you some notes about porn as well. Yeah. This whole playing with the balls thing is no. It's no one. No one wants that. But no. uh, back to this rapid f- f- nipple flicking thing. Oh yeah. Please, dude. Some women don't want breast played with at all. But I've been with uh, more than one woman who take immense pleasure in nipple stimulation. Oh yeah. And more than one that, I mean, they want those things just almost like berated <laughs> oh yeah berated you're rough with them yes like yeah. bite uh, on them or rapid flicking them or pinch them i've no like nipple clamps i thought yeah or in torture thing that no real woman ever liked but i've now been with more than one woman who owns nipple clamps i've oh. never seen that before dude i'm not saying uh the deepest i dive into that pool is with a, a little soft biting but i've never seen a clamp uh, or, or a woman with a clamp yes i yeah. actually uh. dated a woman who had these clamps that were actually they look like a set of tweezers and they had these rubber tips on the end and there was a ring on them and you could pull the the ring up to tighten those tweezers onto the nipples right. and they had a chain in between them. Now keep in mind, this is also the same woman that liked to have a razor sharp knife placed against her throat while she was giving the oral. Right, right. Grain yeah. of salt. I hear what you're saying, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. Um, yes. I have experienced a woman who wants rapid nipple flicking with tongue that she finds it almost borderline orgasmic. Like if you can wow. that with anything else. So, again, if I'm reading this article, rapid flicking like a lizard, women hate it. Well, not all do. This just proves the point, dude, that if if we are having disagreements like, oh, yeah, I do think that's weird and you don't or uh, not that it's weird, but that I've never yeah, heard yeah. of it before. Uh, you know, this this list cannot be concrete. This is this girl's opinions, right? Yes. This is something that I would have thought before that women don't like, just like penis slapping. But I have had women request it. Why aren't you doing it? <laughs> Could you do that to me? I'm like, oh, well, there you go. Uh, next one on the list. Uh, what kind of porn are they watching that makes them think fingering has to be so aggressive? Take it easy. Again, I think that's preference. 
I totally agree. I've been with some women that think fingering is something you do in high school, and if we're not in high school, stop doing it to me. Um, others that like a nice, even, steady pace, and others that want you to elevate and escalate it as they're getting closer, like harder, faster. Right. This is why I've said before, women, for the love of God, during sex, tell us. Tell us faster, harder, slower. Be more like Kanye did. Work it, make it, do it. Makes us harder, better, faster, stronger. Yeah, exactly. You should be like the guy that's on the runway, dude. I want to see everything you want. Back, <laughs> side, you know, like, come on in. Like, I need, I want the direction, and you know what? Can I do it without it? I suppose both of us are not going to have as good of a time, so just tell me what you like. Yes. I've done the same. I've been like, keep going right there. Don't speed up. Just right, right, right like that. Yes. We're going like clear communication. Then we don't have to interpret through porn. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, well, this one segues in actually here. Uh, the next one, going faster when you tell them something feels good or you're going to come. Pro tip, don't change a goddamn thing. Keep the same <laughs> pace. This varies, right? A hundred percent, dude. Yeah. Some people, yeah. Some people don't want it. Some people do. Uh, that's just the way it is. But I'll tell you what, though, if I'm at the point where it's about to happen, I'm yeah. not slowing down at that point because the chance of losing it mm-hmm. is, is, is always there. So, no, I'm sorry, but we're already in the countdown stage. And not to get completely off topic here, but, I mean, in those moments, do you have your um, Tony Danza thoughts? I mean, do you have ways of slowing yourself down? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was revealing. So you think about Tony Danza during sex? I thought that. I thought Brutsky did. Dude. I I mean, baseball was the universal analogy, but yeah. Tony Danza. <laughs> There's nothing well, universal about us, dude. I, I, there's nothing I think about, but I'll try to slow it down a little bit. But there's there's no promises there, you know. This is meant with no disrespect, but you don't think like about your grandma or something like that. You've never uh, like thought, oh, like I've grandma tried, serving me cookies. I've tried to do that in the past. And then what happens is then you then things get all derailed and you lose it and then you're like, ah, oh, come on. I, and then, okay. And, and now I've lost it completely. Not yeah. happening. No, right. So I have these two zones. Like when I first get on in there, there's this immediate you know, desire to just want to come and be done with it. So there are times I got to push through that. Sometimes I'm able to just do it naturally or whatever. But there are times, especially if it's been a long drought or you're with a woman for the first time or second time or something like early in the relationship. Uh, the only way I can do it to slow myself down without doing what the brewski was just saying, where you just lose it, you know, you lose your erection because now you're thinking about grandma or something like that's right. the thing I would do. I have to do something analytical i will look around the room and look for like a picture or something and just be like all right how many trees are in that picture or i start like i have to do really? something analytic because it keeps my brain functioning enough that i don't lose the erection but it slows me down so i have okay. to kind of like you know yes i have to analyze something around me okay yeah that makes sense i mean you got to have those you got to have whatever works for you i mean there's ways and uh yeah i i hear you brewski i mean i don't want to get to a point where i'm like ah god dang it it's gone now yeah but the point they're making with this tip is that guys have an inclination if you say it feels good that you should go faster and i don't think that's a wrong instinct per se but again, it comes down to communication. If you want it to stay right at that pace, tell us that. Because some women do want you to go faster, just like guys want you to go faster if you're getting a BJ or a Handy or whatever. Yeah, because it's like, we're getting there, and I'm ready to blast off. Let's do right. it. It's Yahtzee time. <laughs> it is Yahtzee time. Brewski likes to throw the cup. Listen, I will <laughs> really appreciate you saying right there, just like that these are the words you know if you want me to stay doing what i'm doing i will but you, that's what you got to tell me right and yeah. By, yeah you don't have to write a whole uh soliloquy here it's not a it's not a uh you know you're not giving a speech <laughs> slower faster just like that like a few key words is all we need to know like don't have to kill the momentum we agree continuing on the list things that uh, women feel men have learned from porn and they want us to stop this is an interesting one this is a sign of the times choking not don't oh. choke. Choking without asking. Just because it's a porn trend doesn't mean we all want to be surprise asphyxiated. <laughs> if you really want to, just ask us first. I choking. agree with that, dude. I mean, uh, choking is a consent type of thing. It's it's a complete new thing. I've never once heard of anybody from when I started becoming sexually active who liked to be choked. It's It's the newer generation now. That's what they dig. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I said this is interesting. Not that this woman just said, like, choking is a no-no. That's some porn thing. She just says, make sure you ask first. Yeah. Ask somebody before you shut off the air supply to their brain. I mean, this speaks to... What I referenced earlier, this new sort of uh, condescending, violent trends in porn nowadays, I don't get aroused by the idea of choking a woman during sex. Nope. And I absolutely thought this was something that only existed in the world of porn. But again, in my recent years, I've discovered this has become very mainstream, and some women yeah. actually want it. Yeah. I was with a woman. I was not flirting with the idea of choking her, but I was like touching her up around her collarbone or something, and she was like, oh, do you want to choke me? And I was like, oh, sure. <laughs> and I kind of like, I did what I have done with some other women before. I kind of faux choke a little, like put my hand around your wrist. Or yeah. Something. Your wrist, dude. That right. sounds exciting. <laughs> I put my hand around your neck. And <laughs> I had this one woman tell me once, like, no, choke me. I want to not be able to breathe. Woo. And I had to stop and tell her, like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, what if I accidentally, you know, kill you? The judge is not going to believe me <laughs> that you were the one asking for it. And it has gone wrong before. I mean, I, I see the first 48. I watch uh, SVU, <laughs> dude. I mean, I've seen these things where, like, the choking went too far. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to, like, play a little play role of, like, oh, I'm going to take charge here. And, you know, like, you're faux raping or something almost. But... Otherwise, uh, I'm not into it, but there is a surprising number of women out there who are absolutely into it and some that really want you to choke them, which is crazy. Yeah. Get consent, uh, you know, right. just make sure they like that or want it. And uh, then I would say learn the what threshold not to cross. I don't have to worry about this, dude. Full transparency. I'm way too tender. I, I don't want to hurt you. You know, like, I, I mean, I'll spank you and hurt you that way if you want me to. But uh, as far as, like, I don't want to spit in your mouth. I don't want to. Oh, we see this in porn all the time now. Some women just like to be smacked, like in the face. Right. I've seen oh, yeah. it over and over. And I'm like, I would never do that, dude. It's no. such a buzzkill to me that doesn't get me off. So, yeah. What about ass smacking or hair pulling, though? Because that's another Both. one that I think women like, or certain women like that, and I'm willing to oblige. Yeah, that's another thing that I thought only existed in porn, and I've discovered that, yeah, some women want an ass smack. Some women will want to be bruised, like hit me harder. Seems counterintuitive to me. But There was a woman I dated, different woman, not the same one with a knife to her neck, but this other woman, <laughs> she liked to actually have me spank her ass until she was, like, bright red. Yeah. And then use an ice cube on the hot area and then come back and smack it even harder. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. You have to bring props for these. It's things. intense. You got the ice tray? Yeah, we're ready to go. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. And same with hair pulling. I've had some women be like, pull it harder, pull it hard. I'm like, I thought this was just a porn thing. <laughs> like, right. No, really it's not, it? dude. There, hey, people like that. Again, communication, people. Communication. Not said. Excessive dirty talk. Not just dirty talk. Excessive dirty talk. It just feels like narration to me. <laughs> said what, well, what does that mean? Uh, excessive dirty talk. Like uh, I think they're saying you're just flapping your gums the entire time. Ah, uh, okay. Not that you're like being condescending or over the top of the dirty talk. Just you're from start to finish. You're just talking the entire. You never time. shut up. Yeah, it's filibustering a, with your dirty talk. <laughs> it's 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 like you're um, doing a National Geographic film. Here we see Stephen. He's approaching her from behind. <laughs> Watch as he mounts her and slowly inserts himself into her vagina. Yeah. Listen, I was with someone not that long ago that wanted almost constant narration, and I would struggle with like I had to go into talk radio mode. Just I'm going to commentate on everything I'm seeing, I guess. <laughs> Give me 10 seconds. Like, what yeah. do you mean? Are you just saying what you're uh, are you speaking in third person or is it, you know, I just no. entered you? It's as if I'm hosting a cooking show. Like, all right, now I'm going to chop up the onions. You like these onions <laughs> chopped up like that, don't you? All right, let's open the fridge now and pull something out. Oh, do you want some chocolate or do you want milk? What do you want? Oh, it's milk you want, huh? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to boil this milk right here. Oh, no, you want me to saute it? Is that what like I had to just constantly be commentating on everything. Oh. Dude, that sounds miserable to me. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's awesome. I think I'm off the clock here, lady. I don't need to keep flapping my gums here. Yeah. Hey, at least like, it if I was silent, it was like, why are you silent? 
Did, did she ask oh. him to do it in your radio voice, too? <laughs> yeah. mm. That's just my bank teller that always asked me for that. Do the radio voice. So. That is fascinating to me, dude. I've never heard of that before. This is a long time ago. No, nah, not that long ago. No. <laughs> it's over a year ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is what I'm going to say. That is awful dude i'm glad you're away from that there must have been so much insecurity involved in that like why are you making any noise right. why are you making any noise that is terrible yeah i would protest at times just like i'm just, i know i'm just focusing on this, but... <laughs> yeah right, right <laughs> but then you know it's the juxtapose too because the woman i was with after that is more on the like less is more like we don't need a bunch of moaning and commentary and like i'm just like i'm just trying to get a feel for you people like i don't know what the hell <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> And that's a weird thing to try to gauge, too, because unless you just flat out ask, like I usually the first couple sessions, I I throw some things out there to see if they take it and run with it or yeah. throw it back at me. Like, All right. Dipping my toe, trying to figure out what the right temperature is here for talking or not talking. So. Yeah. It sounds like a job. So uh, the moral of this story is we should watch more or less porn. I think the moral is communicate because porn yeah. is definitely has some things that some people want. Some people don't want. It has some good tips. Subject. Yeah, but it's not yeah. universal. If you're with a woman that likes everything in porn, that's probably a red flag. <laughs> well, either that or she, you need to help her start an OnlyFans page and make some money. Exactly. Uh, I got two more things on the list we'll bust through here. This woman says, asking what the biggest uh, unit I've ever had, the biggest guy wow. I've ever been with. Why do you care? It's not a contest. Do you guys ever ask that? Oh, dude, that's so, uh, again, that's insecurity. I Like, shut up. Like, why do you care? And do you? Have I ever asked? I don't know that I've asked. I know it's come up. Like um, one woman in particular, I remember her telling me a story about a guy that was too big. And I don't think I brought that up. I don't remember. I don't want to know that, dude. That skews me out and makes me feel insecure, whether it was big or small. Like, I don't want to know about another guy's D and you telling me about it. I, I That's not for me. Yeah. I mean, I guess the only good takeaway is it comes down to how you use it. It's really not the size that matters per se, as long as you're at some minimal acceptable level, I've learned from women. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I told you guys, uh, I had that couple I was friends with. The male of the couple would call me every so often and ask me to come over and help him double team his, his yes. lady. Yes. Right. And his penis, when erect, was the size of a thumb. Right. Not and, yeah, way too small, right? No, is, that, but, but, is that small? Oh, no. <laughs> hold on, um, I should give you that. But not, <laughs> not not only did I hear about it, but I had to see it because the, the two of us are right. You know, yes, dude, doing yeah, work, put, putting in work on his his lady. You know, I think maybe some of this oh. is youth oriented because all of the, the things I can think of were in my early twenties. Um, I even got over trying to ask, like, so how many guys you've been with? Like, no, oh, I don't I think I care. You're asking, but you know, the, the, the minute they say a number, you just automatically double it <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they, they kind of immediately. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? It seems like with this younger generation that that is something that they talk about. Like, what's your body count? And the, the higher your body count is, I mean, it's sort of like bragging rights. And I guess I'm just not into it, dude. If it comes up organically in a conversation we're having, that's one thing. But, like, I wouldn't ask, what am I going to do, slut shame you? Or am I going to be like, wow, you're really inexperienced, you know? Right. There's probably no good answer. I mean, there's nothing that's going to make you feel better. Right. Um, everything's setting up for an inferiority complex. Yeah. I was with a woman who was with a uh, NFL player, a Seattle Seahawk, as a matter of fact. And my immediate thought was like, oh, great. So <laughs> you've been with some chiseled athletes who's, you know, in the NFL? Like, how right. could I possibly compare? Yeah. Um, and the woman pointed out, like, seeing him naked was like seeing an action figure. Like, his body was just sculpted perfect, but he had no uh, idea what to do with it. He was terrible uh, in bed. And uh, then I was like, all right, now I feel a little better. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. Pointing that Before that, you were doing sit-ups every morning. Right. Like, I would be there. A uh, Couldn't it have been a Pittsburgh Steeler or something like that? Exactly. Yeah. Right? Wow. Shane Gillis, uh, <laughs> who is a comic, has a new special out on Netflix that is hysterical, by the way, and it's called Beautiful Dogs. But part of the uh, part of one of his bits is, and it's true, but uh, his 
a girlfriend broke up with him and she's dating a Navy SEAL now. And he oh. goes on and on about, like, you know how bad that sucks that, you know, he, she's dating a Navy SEAL. I'm inferior in every way. It's so right. difficult. Yes. Well, not not necessarily because those guys are all tapped in the head. So you you've at least got them mentally. You yeah, know, you're, you're, maybe you're not, so. Yeah. And this comes down to what you were saying about Adam Levine from Maroon Five. Like dating a, a an NFL player is the equivalent of a guy dating a supermodel. But yeah. that doesn't mean that they're any good in bed or that they're even a good person. Exactly. They might look good. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. mean they got what it takes behind the scenes. So. Yeah. All right. What's the next one on there? And the last one on the list, something that uh, kind of came up earlier, calling someone a whore or a bitch without checking first to see if that's what they like. like uh, that's, I would never do that without you telling me that that's something you're into. Oh, yeah. And again, uh, I would think no woman would want to be called that during sex, but I've been with more than one that want it. I don't yeah. get it. But again, you're asking, so okay, you dirty little whore. Well, and think about it this way, dude. What if the girl likes to degrade the guy? I mean, do you put up with it to get her off or to make her happy? Like if she wanted to call you like a wussy little bitch while you were making the sex? Well, that's a good question. I've always said if you're not hurting me, I'm into whatever. So, uh, but yeah, that would probably hurt my feelings. <laughs> Screw me, <laughs> well, you tiny little bitch. Right. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I told you guys that I want to hook up with any number of Fox News women as long as they call me just awful names while i'm banging yeah. away you know you want to be degraded or yeah but what you're talking about though is co- they're complimenting you quote you want to be called a dirty little liberal and yeah like that, yeah right? stuff like that yeah but what if they were like hey you fat small penis you know <laughs> you know like hey wait that's hurtful i you know i don't know no i don't care you know call me whatever you want as long as i'm getting in there and and i'm getting what i need to physically <laughs> right. i can deal with that it, listen right. you, you don't get to be my size and and have people calling you fat all the time and let it bother you anymore. You just right. you just don't. Like that's well, the best you got, really. Is this is it? what I was talking about, that it's all relative. You just yeah. don't know what someone is into or wants. True. Some things you saw in porn, you may think no woman would ever want that or no guy would ever want that, but you just don't know. So Yeah. I guess with all aspects of a relationship, communication is is paramount. A hundred percent. Will you tell me if I did something wrong? Will you will you judge me for a minute here if I tell you sure. something I did? Yeah, uh, I a uh, guy else's turn finally. Go ahead. <laughs> when I was in Omaha, this guy that's a friend of my brother's who I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm really not a fan of him now. He walked up to me, haven't seen him in a while, and he was like, "Wow, you got fat. Oh. You are fat." man wow. and i was like i was so taken aback by it because again not that it hurts my feelings but that's the first thing that he said to me and i haven't seen him in years he's real tiny and skinny and uh it just kind of came out i was like how long have you had aids <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, Good and for then, you. and but then i st- started feeling bad about it like no. that was a little rough uh <laughs> no is it bad no, 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 because it's one thing to walk up to someone and say, boy, you lost a bunch of weight, not realizing you may be skinny shaming them because I've been getting that of late where someone walks. I've, I've had multiple people that haven't seen me since COVID or whatever. And they're like, eat a burger, right? <laughs> or uh, yeah. boy, you're half the man you used to be. Or are you sick? <laughs> like, it's not always a compliment to tell someone, boy, you've lost a ton of weight. Like, sure. You know, things can make you self-conscious, but it's definitely not okay to walk up to someone and say, boy, are you fat? Look at all the weight you gained. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was so taken aback, dude. And, and that was just, I almost went on autopilot. I was like, how long have you had AIDS? And he kind of just <laughs> stared at me for a minute. And I was like, you look like crap, dude. Come on. Oh, you, uh, he opened that can of worms. It was good karma for you to throw it back in his face and make him brought it on himself. All right, good. So, no, okay. Kudos to you. I'm not gonna worry. AIDS about is it. a little dated of a reference, but besides that, it's uh, you know, it's all good. Yeah, he's old like me. <laughs> I mean, he's older than me, so he he definitely he gets got it. the reference. Yeah, we've got a lot of '80s references on the show. So if you're referencing, you know, the Goonies, then you can reference AIDS. So, right. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So there you go. Communication, people, makes the world go round. Indeed it does. A good list today. And, uh, yeah, we gave advice. Take the advice and use it as you will. 
Yeah, and stop demonizing porn. There are there is some value to it, but uh, you just gotta you know take it with a grain of salt and communicate with your person. All right, fellers, the vocal minority with Nick and Steve Olabruski. You can find us at thevocalminority.net. All our socials are there, right? Yes, they are. Go get social. All right, Bruski. Yes, sir. Goodbye. And we say bye bye. Test one two. Test one two. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. Nick Reynolds, Steve Harness, and Cousin Brewski. The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. And Steve, you gotta try injecting into a mouth. Flavors are unbelievable. Steve will come with your package. Ah. All of it. Even if I don't take it out and play with it, I still like seeing it. So. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And when you're finished... Just put it back in its slot. I'm also going to throw in my eight and a half inch. I'm also going to give you my large. Watch how easily it separates the skin from the meat. I'm including my boning because no that is really complete without one. Watch how it cuts cheese. Wow. Just last night, my husband and I were eating. I had the confidence with this boning to just slice right through and bone the whole thing. And it was just wonderful. Another fine moment brought to you by the vocal minority. We are vocal minority.